Today we're looking at lead code number 46. It's called permutations. This is a classic, classic interview question and this uses a pattern that you will see in many, many, many other problems that are frequently asked in interviews that deal with anything relating to combinations, permutations, or subsets. Okay, so we're gonna, we're gonna use a template to solve this. Before we go that, we'll do a conceptual overview and really look at what's going on underneath the hood. And there's a whole uh, series of questions that I'm solving that are using this template and this pattern that's using recursion as a tree that I highly suggest looking because th this is one of those things that doesn't come off easily. Like it's not something that, that is intuitive and it takes some time for this concept to really sink in. But it's very powerful because once you understand how this works, you can solve many, many other problems uh, quite quickly and easily. Okay, so here we're given an array of nums of distinct integers. We're gonna return all the possible permutations and we can return the answer in any order. So here we have one, two, three, and we can say we can see that this is just a per, all these um, result inputs or these variables here are just a permutation of this input, all the possible permutations. 1, 2, 3, 1, 3, 2, 2, 1, 3, 2, 3, 1, so on and so forth. Here we have 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1. Okay, and we have some constraints here. The nums.length is going to be 1 to 6. Nums will be any, any integer from minus 10 to 10, and all of them are going to be unique. Okay, so at first glance, the, the intuitive way I think people would think about this, at least the way I thought about it, is just for loops, right? Like you can create a for loop here for one and then go and create another for loop that's the size of the input array. And it gets very complicated when you start thinking of it that way. The other way is a recursive approach and it's really thinking of recursion as a tree, okay? So let's kind of go over what I mean by that. So let's say at our root node of our tree, we're gonna have our input, which is one, two, three. Now, if i is at one, okay, let's say i is at one, and we're gonna also start j at i, okay? So j is also gonna be at one right over here, okay? And what are our options here? Well, we, we have three options for this ith index. We can either have one there, we can have place two there, or we can place three there. Okay, so our first level of the tree is going to be, we can either have one, two, three. We can either have two, one, three, or we can have three, uh, three, one, and two. Right? And you can see all we do to get these three is if we increment j here and swap this two and one, we're gonna get two, one, three, okay? And if we increment j over here and we swap those two, we're gonna get three, one, two. So that's how we're gonna get to the first level. Now, once we get to that first level, we increment i and we repeat the same process, okay? On each one of these, each one of these levels right over here. So here at one, two, three, we can have one, two, three, because we're gonna swap with i and j, which is just the same number. We're gonna then increment j, okay, to three, and we're gonna swap it with i uh, at, our, at our next uh, option here. So here we're gonna get um, one, three, and two, okay? And now we'll do the same thing for the other two levels. Here we're gonna get two, one, three, and we're gonna get two, three, and one, just by swapping i and j using that same pattern. And similarly, over here, we're gonna get three, one, two, and we're gonna swap one and two, so we're gonna get three, two, and one. Now, once we get to this leaf level, you can see that we have found all the permutations. Okay? So here, once i gets to this level and j has nowhere to go, we reach our base case. i goes out of the range and we hit our base case, right? So what do we wanna do at the leaf level here? At this leaf level, all we wanna do is make a copy of this 
array, but we're going to keep it in a slate, make a copy of this array. Actually, we don't even need a slate. We can just use our input here because we're just going to be swapping around the values. And we can just go ahead and push this into our result. So here we can, when we get to this base level here, we can push one, two, and three, make a copy of whatever is in our input and push it into our global result. Okay, we'll push that in, push that in, and so on and so forth. And you can see here that that is all of our permutations. And so no matter how big the input gets, we can just look at it as a tree. And when we get down to the leaf level of the tree, we hit that base case we just scan that and push that into the result. Okay, and so how is, this, how is this actually happening? Well, we have our input here. We're not creating any new space. We're just gonna use the input space and we're just gonna go depth first search. We're gonna go all the way down in order or pre-order and we're gonna get to the leaf level. Then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna swap it and then re-swap it as it comes back up and then increment J and swap it, re-swap it as it comes back up and so on and so forth. It's just gonna kind of move this way across the stack. Okay, until it uh, reaches the end there. So that's the idea. Now, what is our time and space complexity here? Well, we're creating a tree, okay? So let me get rid of this uh, green here. We're creating this tree and so on each level, what is our space? Okay, well, we're creating, um, we have level one here. This is gonna be times uh, two. Let's take a look here. So if we have three here, sorry. If we have three here, we're gonna multiply this by one, which is three, and then we're gonna multiply that by two. So what I'm trying to get at is that it's factorial. We're gonna have um, three times two times one. Okay, so that's gonna represent our tree. It's going to be n factorial. And we have one more thing we're gonna do is when we get to the leaf level, we have a linear operation because we have to scan that, right? So we're gonna do that times three. So we can look at this as n factorial times n. For time. Okay, because as we go down every level, this is going to be factorial. And when we hit the bottom here, we're going to have to push that into our global result. That's going to be our n. Okay. And what about space? So space complexity, we're going to have to create this result, which is also going to be factorial, right? And then we're going to have to consider the height of the tree at any point. And the height of the tree is going to be n. So the space complexity, at least this way, how we're doing it, is also going to be O of n factorial times n. It is very tricky to understand time and space complexity with these permutations or subsets, especially when you start adding backtracking and constraints to it. When you start pruning the tree or cutting off trees based on certain criteria, as we'll go in with these other problems that we'll, that we'll look at, it gets a little tricky on, on calculating time and space complexity. But I think this is the simplest way to explain it. You can kind of see when we draw out the tree we're having an n factorial uh, space and time. And then when we reach the leaf level, we have to scan that into our result. That's also creating, um, that's creating an n operation on space and time. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump into the code. And like I said, we're gonna use a template. And I'm gonna use the same template for all these recursive problems because I want to really drive home the point that if we use a template to solve these problems, we can solve many, many, many problems just using the same template, and it's very powerful. So the idea is we're going to create a global result, okay, and then we're going to have a recursive case. So let's just go ahead and comment this in. Okay, and then we're going to have our depth first search uh, recursive case.
So we'll go ahead and do dot first search, and then this will take in an i variable, just like we had here. We had an i that's going to be in the input. We're going to have our nums, and that's actually all we need for this particular problem. We don't need a slate because we're just going to use the input array and swap the numbers. So now, with this, we need a base case. And what it's going to be is that if i equals nums.length, that means we're at the leaf level, what do we want to do? We just want to make a copy of whatever is in nums and push it into the global result. So we can do result.push nums.slice and then return. Okay, so all this means is that we are getting down to the leaf level. I has now reached outside of the range here. Okay, and once we are at that leaf level, we're just going to go ahead and make a copy of this, this right here, and push it into the result at the, at the leaf level. That's going to be our base case. Okay, else we're going to have a depth first search recursive case. And what do we have to do here? Well, we have to, we have to swap between i and j. So we're going to create a for loop here. We're going to say let j equals i, where j is less than nums.length, and we'll increment j. And now what do we want to do? We just want to swap these and reswap them, right? We just want to swap i and j, and then increment j, and then just send that down the recursive tree. And as we backtrack, as we go back up the tree, we just want to make sure that we re-swap, and so then we can swap again as j increments. This is very confusing if you have never seen this before, so I highly recommend that if it's your first time seeing this, to get a pen and paper and draw this out. And it might take an hour or two to really draw this out to understand what's happening here, because it, it's not something that, that is very intuitive to understand. At least for me, it wasn't. So what we're going to do here is we're going to say nums of i and nums at j. It's going to equal nums at j and nums at i. And all we're doing here is just we're swapping those variables. We're going to then increment, we're going to recursively call our depth first search helper, incrementing uh, i, and then calling in nums. And then we're going to do the same thing here and reswap it as we go back up the tree. OK? So now all we have to do is call our depth first search, pass in uh, i and nums and then we'll just return our result. Okay, let's go ahead and run that, make sure everything works, and we're good. Okay, and so this is the pattern, and I'm gonna use the same pattern. We're gonna have a global result. We're gonna have a recursive depth first search helper. We're gonna have a base case, or we can have a backtracking case Actually, and we can have a backtracking case. So a base case and a backtracking case. We'll work on those problems later. Uh, one of them is generate parentheses. Another one is target sum. That's where we're dealing with some sort of constraint at the leaf level. And as we're going down the tree, we want to backtrack if, if it's, there's no point in going down the rest of the tree. But we'll get to that later. So here we're going to have a base case, and then we're going to have a recursive case, a depth first search recursive case. And so this is going in order depth first search as this recursive tree uh, is built going down. And when we hit the leaf level, that's going to be this base case right here. We're going to push whatever our result is into some sort of global result. Okay, And then we just return this result. Okay, So if this is confusing, I highly recommend watching this video over again, uh, getting a pen and paper, trying the inputs out from 1 to 3, 1 to 4. When you go past 4, the tree gets really huge, so I'd, try, I'd recommend keeping it under like 2 and four, two and 3. That way you can really see the tree. And uh, check out the other videos that I have that go over this, this concept um, as well. Uh, so it'll be a good, good extra practice. Okay, so that is Leap Code number 46, Permutations. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see everyone on the next one.